So, uh, listening to the BBC 12095 on the uh, good old uh, Westinghouse International, it is uh, interesting because I was looking at the um, schematics and there's some information about this radio and its different tubes. I looked at actually the specs of each tube within this receiver and one of the tubes is actually used for frequency stability. And I have to say that when you tune a frequency, like I'm tuned on 12095 right now, I will probably be able to leave it there for an hour or two, and it barely will have moved from the frequency. So it's actually more stable than a lot of transistor radios of the 80s uh, that were drifting like crazy. Uh, one that comes to mind is the, uh, the Realistic DX100 that you see right here. So it's kind of cool to uh, see that, you know, care was taken on this radio to really uh, make things more high quality. Um, I don't know how much this radio would cost in, in 1949, 1950 when it was sold. Um, for sure it wasn't one of the cheap, you know, uh, radios at the time, the, the, the cheap All-American 5s that, that were very popular and, and that were almost, you know, dangerous to operate. Uh, this definitely has some care taken to make sure that the performance is there and that stability is there. Audio quality is amazing. It's just so, so fun to listen to this. I was actually listening to a medium wave station that was playing oldies all afternoon. And I could almost, you know, imagine whoever owned this back in the 50s or 60s listening to that same music and, you know, and one thought that came to mind uh, that, um, you know, it's here today uh, in my shack, but I, you know, I just wonder, you know, what's its, what's its history? Where did it go? What houses and who owned it before and um, listen to this? And uh, for sure, when you look at the electronics inside, it's been taken care of by someone really, really uh, took the time to clean it up and um, really make it beautiful and, and a, a, a nice uh, radio again, but uh, kind of fun to operate. It's always fun uh, to listen to these old tube radios. Uh, the Westinghouse International uh, receiver here, uh, the AT, I'm trying to remember, AT-104 or something like that, uh, that is... Uh, from about 1949 to 1951, depending on the websites that you go to. So we could center it at 1950. So it's still more than 70 years old. Pretty cool. Uh, the doctor and he and I were, were free to uh, go 